You thought Shohei Otani had a good day yesterday. How about the morning wager? Perfect 3-0 sweep. We break out the bro. A little nice 9-2 run on the program, Mark Zinno, the last three days. Let's see if we can sweep again. I mean, look, they're eating hot dogs. I had a I mean, rally burger yesterday. Although I, I ate my rally burger before the game because I bet the under, obviously, at the Guardians-Twins game that I went to. And I wanted no runs to be scored. So there was no late rally burger because, as you know, you can't have a rally without a bleeping rally burger. And I didn't want a rally. Anyway, that was yesterday. The people have tuned in is. for today. There, there we go. There we go. Uh, Mark Zinno, in your neck of the woods, the NL East, the Braves mm. are playing the Marlins. One would mm. think... Given Atlanta's current lot that they need to win games in order to make up a two-game gap to make the playoffs, that uh, they'll be quite motivated. And you think this game will not be close tonight. Well, I've told you guys this system before, if you've paid attention to the morning wager since the beginning of the baseball season. I've played it this year. I played it last year. I'll continue to play it until the numbers tell me otherwise. There's only two ways to bet a Braves-Marlins game. Braves minus one and a half or Marlins money line. That's it. Uh, if you look back at the last three seasons, dating back to 2022, the Braves' overall record against the Marlins is 29 and 13. Of those 29 wins, all but five were by one run, right? So only five run one wins, where the minus one and a half that the Braves won a game didn't cash. So 24 of the 29 wins were by two runs or more. Again, Braves win big, he's outright. Marlins start of Valente Beloso has faced the Braves once this year when five innings gave up two runs on just two hits in a 5-3, two-run differential loss for the Marlins. So Atlanta's bats come alive the last three games. They've scored a whole bunch of runs against the Reds, even though they lost the first game of the series. But uh, they've been hitting the snot out of the ball the last three games. We have to pray. I mean, you have to pray because this is typical Braves this year. They hit, hit the ball for three games straight. You're like, oh, yeah, the offense is back. And then guess what happens? The offense sucks. So uh, we need them to hit the ball. but. The good thing about this is two things. One, if the Braves' bats are dead, I think we're dead. But two, Braves starter Charlie Morton. I always tell you, you get good Charlie or bad Charlie. Good Charlie is six innings, you know, five hits, one run. Bad Charlie is five innings, six runs, and it's over. The good thing about this game, it's a BP special in the sense that probably by the third inning, I'll know whether I need to keep watching, right? And I could turn the TV off and walk away. Because if the Braves aren't up big early, guess what? They're not covering a one and a half because Charlie Morton's getting rocked. And it's not good. I'd be surprised if we get like a, a one nothing game through five. I don't think that's typically how these things go. But uh, again, that would favor the Braves because they have the better bullpen. So uh, I would tend to believe that in this spot, Braves score early, get ahead early. Marlins continue to chase and uh, Braves get out of there with at least a two run victory. And oh, by All the right, way, smash that. I oh. forgot to mention, sorry to cut you off because you and I are doing something special today and we'll tell the people about it in a minute. This is actually a client. I was, the folks. I, 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 I was just, yeah. yes, I was, I was, I was actually going to clarify that. Yes, yes. I, so I wanted to client. clarify that. Already so, on the card, two already put out there. Two things. Number one, smash yes. that like button if you want to lay the one and a half runs with the Atlanta Braves yes. and Mark Zinno. Yes. Number two, yes, that is a client play for Mark, and it is a special Friday here, uh, not just at wagertalk.com, more on that in just a moment, but here on the Morning Wager specifically, because Mark just gave you a client play, and I'm going to give you my only client play for Friday, free of charge here. It is the over in Mets Phillies. Mark, you go back to May 15th. These two NL East rivals have met eight times. Seven of those games have seen nine or more runs scored including 16 last night. The exception, the one game where they did not combine for nine runs was last Sunday, a 2-1 Phillies win with the same exact starting pitching matchup we have today, Christopher Sanchez against David Peterson. Now, my feelings on David Peterson are well documented. Okay, he is the Bernie Madoff of Major League Baseball. The man is a fraud. All right, I don't know how many times I have to yell about it, but his expected ERA, nearly two full points higher than his actual ERA. He's gotten away with walking a lot of guys. His FIP is a full point higher than his ERA. There are just so many negative regression signs on the profile. I know the season's almost over, so that we're running out of time to regress, but the Mets have lost his last two starts, including a blow-up uh, where I gave out the over here on the show um, uh, not that long ago. So, why should we expect different today, Mark, than that 2-1 game on Sunday? Well, Christopher Sanchez... Much different pitcher on the road than at home. His ERA, Dan Alexander knows this, 
it jumps three full points away from home compared to uh, at Citizens Bank Park. That is what we call a drastic split. These two offenses have proven they can hit. So I, this has not been officially uh, entered if you're a subscriber for me because I'm waiting to see if we get a seven. But I will be playing the over, even if it stays at seven and a half, between Phillies and Mets. That is my lone client selection for Friday. Now. Two free plays to get you started on the morning wager, Mark. How can we top that? Well, how about it's 50% off all plays today at wagertalk.com. What a deal. My first 5% college football play for the season is locked and loaded. You can get it for just $17.50. Mark Zitto, he too, has a 5% college football play locked and loaded. Would you like to tell the fine folks about what – I'm not going to say what you have cooking, okay, because you got very upset when I used that terminology yesterday – why don't you uh, tell the people what you have at your page, WT.buzz-MZ, right now? Just a whole lot of wonderment and excitement. You know, good-looking people, <laughs> entertainment. Uh, it's all there, WT.buzz-MZ, along with a baseball two-pack here for Friday. <laughs> and uh, college card is already up, guys. Um, three plays on the college card right now, including the 5% best bet over at the site uh, for the weekend. Not only that, I, I – I, BP knows this. I've been, I've been debating whether to add a fourth play for college. I, I've, I'm on the fence. I, I'm on the fence pole. It is, it is uncomfortable where I'm sitting. I'd like to get off the fence. Yes, it does, uh, and make a decision here. But we have one more day uh, and maybe a couple of cocktails to imbibe tonight where I'll just be, you know what, screw it. Let's just do it and, and <laughs> throw caution to the wind, and we'll get to a fourth play. But YOLO! we do have three plays. YOLO, 5% best bet. Baseball package up there as well. It is a veritable smorgasbord of deliciousness of picks from yours truly. Love it. Love it. You can also you get, I I've got my record. You notice how I didn't top my oh. record like you. Oh, well, I was going to say that I did go 4-0 in the NFL last week and that you can get my complete NFL Sunday package for half off $14.50 off. for three NFL plays on Sunday. Currently available at WT.buzz slash BP. I'll talk about my soccer record later when maybe Mark is, is not paying attention. All right. Anyway, there's anybody else the record. Neither, neither will anybody else be paying attention when you talk about your soccer record. Well, they should. I'm a, did you have the over? Like I told you in Leverkusen Feyenoord yesterday? Cash in the first half. Well, bless you. They put four on the they put four on the score sheet in the first half. Score Thank board. you very much. Score no, board. Score There's a scoreboard. No, 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 no. It's not a sheet. There's a scoreboard. I'm sure in that Stop stadium it. where there there is a field, or as you would like to call it, <laughs> it's a pitch. A bitch. I mean a pitch, sorry. Um, you know, and uh there is a big scoreboard that keeps a tally of how many goals have been scored by both teams. Not a score sheet. We write it on a sheet. We put it on the sheet. This is why okay. nobody in America likes soccer. Because you take very simple terms and you change them for no apparent reason. I don't need a pitch. I have a field. I don't need a kid. I have a jersey. I don't need a score sheet. I have a scoreboard. Okay? You know what we also need? Commercials. Because no one wants to watch 90 minutes of something going on. Stop. I disagree completely. As love, Dan Alexander love calls us, no commercial. They're, not boots. they're not boots. They're cleats. They're spikes. Yeah. Okay. Not boots. Yeah. Boots exactly. that you wear in combat or in the rain. Okay. Galoshes, not boots. Cleats. Again, you make this stuff very difficult and it's not. Okay. And I notice you have no retort because there is no retort because your sport is stupid. You, you were talking very fast. That's why I had no retort. It's a great sport. By the way, so now that Mark Zeno got that out of the way, I'm now 68% in soccer since April. That's number one at wagertalk.com. Thank you very much. 10-0-1, my last 11 in the English Premier League, or as some call it, the top flight. All right, let's talk about the best bet for today's show. First half, we're looking the under in Nebraska, oh, Illinois. The real I don't think Illinois... The real I don't football. think Illinois scored a lot. I don't think I don't think Illinois is going to score a lot of points in this game, Mark. And you don't think there's going to be a lot of points uh, scored. I, I got nothing for Friday College Football for clients. Obviously, I already gave you my one play, the baseball over with the Phillies and the Mets. But we were talking before the show, and you know these two teams are a combined six and zero oh to the under so far. It's ranked versus ranked. Oh, by the way, you go back the last five seasons, you take the favorite in a ranked versus ranked game. 57% ATS. I had a winner in that situation last Friday with Kansas State against Arizona. I don't think the gap here is quite as wide as it was there, which is why I'm not laying it with Nebraska. Nebraska's the better team. I need Illinois to start losing. I have a win total under 5.5. They're already 3-0. and But uh, you and I think the scoring 
will be uh, rather minimal before halftime is the way we're looking at this game. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, the fighting Illini and quarterback Luke Altmaier are on their first road game this year. Uh, their last two contests against Kansas and Central Michigan, um, not exactly juggernauts, but they only scored 23 and 30 against them. This is clearly a defensive team that uh, has a design on a much slower style of play than what uh, what their opponents do, right? They want to dictate the pace the whole way. So uh, on the flip side, you have Dylan Rayola. Uh, the two of them actually nearly have identical numbers for the first three games. However, clearly Rayola is the better thrower of the football here. Um, and he, you know, Rayola's lived up to his five-star billing as a recruit, um, so it makes a ton of sense. He's completing 74% of his passes. He's only averaging 223 yards per game. Um, and so this is a style here between these two teams that lends itself to a much slower pace, much more running the football and back and forth. These two teams played to a 20 to seven final last year. Um, and I, I mean, look at this total PP, you and I joke all the time, like they can't get to 39, you know, 37, 39 in a college football game. Well, 43 is only like one more score, one more touchdown. So, um, I lean on the under here. It's Brett Bielema. This is the style that he plays. He wants to play defense. He wants to play slow. Um, you know, even though Dylan Rayola is a big upgrade offensively for Nebraska and the Cornhuskers, they haven't faced a legit defense yet this year. Colorado doesn't count. UTEP and you and I do not count. So the idea that they've only given up 20 points through three games is a little bit misleading. Again, first road game for Illinois. By the way, Nebraska goes out on the road next week for the first time. Um, and the winner of this one clearly is going to have a, a leg up in the Big Ten. We'll see how it goes. But I like the under in the first half because why, BP? It's not going under early. Dave. It's not going under late. And uh, on that note, I should bring up, if this is okay for me to tout, our show best bet yesterday where we had the first half under in the Jets-Patriots. Stayed under early? Thanks for that. Stayed under late. Right at the end. The and it stayed under the whole game. If you, were, if you remember yesterday's show, if you're that kind of fan, because we love you, uh, remember I told you that there were 20s out there. There was one there lone 20. Out. When I said that, there was one lone 20 out there at an offshore book. And when this thing got to 14-3 to three and the Jets were driving, BP and I are texting each other. Oh. It's landing on 20. Oh, spit. Uh, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that first half under 20 should have been really good. I'm glad I mentioned the fact yeah. that there was one straight 20 out there. Probably should have played it. Uh, nonetheless, we get uh, an idiot kicker to be an idiot kicker and save us. It's not often I applaud kickers for being idiots, but thank you very much, Greg Zerline. You suck. Um, your family sucks. You, the kickers suck. Everyone sucks. Yeah, now that's uncalled for. The guy did. He just missed a field goal and it helped us out. And you insult the guy's I family. Understand. I understand that, but guess what? If you're in the family of a kicker, you suck too, because kickers suck. My it's God. suck by suck by proxy. You know what sport they kick? Soccer. Yeah, they I kick at soccer with, with, with a cleat, with a cleat, not a boot, with a cleat. Spikes. Plenty Cleats. of there are plenty of fixtures this weekend in soccer, <laughs> and there are plenty of games to be played in football. Head on over to our respective pages Another to check it's everything we got. Up. It's a match. Fixture. No fixture. I take it a step further. Fixture. Even, further. Even dumber. You've gone from dumb to dumber. Okay, it's a soccer game. Nope, soccer. Don't know what you're talking about. You know this. You can describe this with so many words, and they're all correct, probably. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> if you haven't already liked this show, you should do that right now. Please comment down below with your thoughts on Friday and the weekend in whatever sport you'd like to talk about. Until next time, guys, let's cash some tickets.